This is Dimitri Lascaros reporting from Montreal, Canada for the Real News Network. Canada's new Democratic Party, widely regarded as being social democratic, has a new leader, Jagmeet Singh. In about a week, members of the party will converge on the nation's capital, Ottawa, for the first annual NDB convention under the new leader. Pro-Israel lobby groups are nervous about what might happen at the upcoming convention. Jagmeet Singh's predecessor, Tom Mulcair, was widely criticized by Palestinian rights advocates for being too supportive of the state of Israel. But after Jagmeet Singh replaced Tom Mulcair, the NDP has adopted a noticeably more combative tone about Palestinian rights. For example, on February 2nd, 2018, the NDP's foreign affairs critic, Hélène Lavadière, took the Liberal government to task in Canada's parliament on a range of Palestinian rights issues. Let's listen to what Madame Lavadière had to say. Minister was appointed to oversee foreign affairs. I have sent her many letters on Israel and Palestine, and I have yet to receive a reply. Really? Not a single reply yet. Does the government have the position on labeling of products from illegal settlement, settlements? No reply. Will the government defend the rights of imprisoned Palestinian children, including Haed Tamimi? No reply. Has the government raised concerns about threats to villa, Palestinian villages like Susiya? No, no reply. reply. Why won't the minister answer our... Canada's pro-Israel lobby is concerned that this new tone could portend the adoption of a more pro-Palestinian policy by the NDP at its upcoming convention. On January 25th, 2018, the Canadian Jewish News reported that Palestinian rights activists in the NDP have brought forward a policy resolution that, quote, calls on Canada to employ boycott, divestment, and sanction strategies against the Jewish state, close quote. The Canadian Jewish News quoted Avi Ben Lolo, president of the Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center as stating that, quote, the resolution is misleading and paints Israel as a villain, failing to mention the violence perpetrated by Palestinians and the willing willingness of the Palestinian Authority to support that violence. But the question remains, how far is the NDP leadership truly prepared to go to defend the rights of the Palestinian people? To explore this question, we are joined today by two Palestinian rights activists from the NDP who are spearheading a new resolution on Palestine in advance of the upcoming convention in Ottawa. Genevieve Nevin is a longtime NDP activist and a member of Independent Jewish Voices Canada. She is currently finishing her degree in International Development and Indigenous Studies at the University of Ottawa, which is situated on unceded Algonquin territory. Yazin Kader is a Palestinian organizer based in Canada. He joined the NDP in 2013. So Genevieve, let's start with you. What precisely does the new resolution, which you and Yazin and others have been promoting, call for? Well, essentially it calls for a lot which has already been brought up by NDP members in the past or what have already been spoken to by NDP politicians. Um, but we want to essentially see it constitutionalized within our policy book. So specifically, it calls for Israel to end its blockade on Gaza and to recognize Arab Palestinians' right of full equality under law and address refugee climates fairly. But more specifically as well, we, we call with this resolution to ban the settlement products and to use other form of diplomatic and economic pressure to end the occupation. Um, but with this, we want to emphasize that it's not necessarily, it's not a BDS resolution in that it's only focusing on the illegal settlements of the illegal uh, products stemming from the illegal settlement colonies. Right, and the, and the BDS movement has much broader goals, I understand, aimed essentially at any corporation, organization, individual that is complicit in the violation of Palestinian rights. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. So, and, and, and I also correct Genevieve in understanding that if this resolution is adopted, it would be the first time that the NDP has ever called for any form of economic sanction on the state of Israel. Well, again, essentially with that, we, we saw with our leadership race and with the election of um, Jigmeet Singh is, is that a lot of what we're calling for with this resolution has been stuff that uh, NDP profile, high profile members of the NDP have called for in the past. So the organization of which I'm a part, uh, Independent Jewish Voices, along with Canadians for Peace and Justice in the Middle East, released a questionnaire that all of the leadership candidates uh, undertook during the leadership race and which explored this issue. And when we, we were very heartened to see that in his response to this question, uh, Jigmeet Singh said he would be open to some form of economic sanctions or banning of settlement products. Right. So Yazin, uh, please tell us about the ways in which you, Genevieve, and others have been trying to promote this resolution. 
Well, you know, first of all, the resolution has been, you know, quite popular uh, among um, among membership. I mean, we know from a survey done last year that uh, 66%, that's two thirds of uh, Canadians say that they think that uh, uh, sanctions on Israel to end its settlement uh, program is reasonable and that that number rises to 84% among New Democrats. So this isn't something that is sort of, you know, new. New Democrats already know about this. New Democrats already, for the most part, think it's reasonable. Um, what we have done is we've we've sort of sent this out to as many EDAs as we can, and remarkably, the response has been, uh, you know, quite uh, quite positive. And by EDA, by the way, I mean uh, the writing associations. That's the local NDP chapters. About 26 local NDP chapters, 26 EDAs, uh, said that they endorse this resolution. Uh, the youth wing of the party has endorsed this resolution. The youth wing in Quebec, in New Brunswick, and many many university chapters have said that they supported this resolution. So all we had to do was, re was just reach out with the text of our resolution, which is asking for things that are quite reasonable, uh, that will push the fold of the conversation, but are within you know a grasp in terms of what Canadians want. And the response was automatic. People were very enthusiastic about this and they offered to help. And in fact, we're seeing quite a bit of, um, uh, of offers to, to assist, us, assist us in the uh, convention. So yes, and I'd like to talk to you about the reaction that these promotional efforts, uh, these, this advocacy uh, has elicited from uh, the caucus, the NDP caucus and the leadership. But before I do that, I'd like to play a clip for you uh, of an exchange that I myself recently had with the NDP's new leader, Jagmeet Singh. This, this exchange occurred uh, in the second half of last year at a campaign event in London, Ontario, just before the party's members voted to make Mr. Singh the new leader. Uh, so let's listen to what uh, what was said in that exchange. There have been decades of negotiations and political pressure, moral pressure has been applied by the international community. So there has been no penalty imposed by the state of Israel in any form, whether uh, government sanctions, civil society sanctions, that's only just begun, it's in its infancy. And so really my question is focused on the is, is, is addressing the issue of without sanctions, without some form of economic penalty, peaceful economic penalty. Uh, is there a solution to this problem? Because the settlements are now triple in size from what they were before the Oslo Peace Accord. So it seems as though the only way we're going to get any kind of change in the behavior of the state of Israel is for international law to be enforced. And we have to move beyond dialogue. And so my question to you is to support enforcement of international law going beyond dialogue, particularly through the use of economic sanctions and so on. So I haven't cut them out on uh, whether we should, I mean, I think it makes sense. Uh, I think we should. We've done it before in the past where countries have violated international law and these sanctions, so I think it makes sense. I haven't uh, laid out exactly what that sanction looks like, how much, how long, the details around it. But the, the spirit of what you're saying, yes, I think that any country that violates international law should face a repercussion. I just don't know exactly what the uh, nature of that to give you a very exhaustive answer. But yes, uh, people who violate international law should receive a sanction. And so do you support the recognition of the state of Palestine by Canada, by the Canadian government? How do you so Yazin, uh, you will have seen and heard that in my conversation with him, Mr. Singh endorsed the principle that human rights violators like Israel should be subjected to economic sanctions. And he also said he was 100% in favor of Canada's recognition of the state of Palestine. So my question to you, Yazin, is in your interactions with NDP MPs and the leadership of the party, do you have the sense that the leadership is prepared to support at this convention some form of economic sanctions on the state of Israel? Well, um, we, you know, from the response that we've been getting from members of parliament, members of caucus with the, within the NDP, um, there is a, a bit of reluctance, admittedly. Uh, they want to push the conversation forward. They want to be able to have a mandate from members to uh, express certain, you know, push forward certain policies like labeling of settlement product. And in fact, that's what Jagmeet Singh in, in, the, in a survey uh, or in a questionnaire, I should say, uh, sent to uh, him uh, when he was running for the leadership of the of the party, said he would support labeling and that he would consider banning of settlement products. Um, but they have been very reluctant to add to that to a settlement ban. And you know, it 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 is strange because the level of the level of support on the grassroots level, the level of support on the local chapters level, has been overwhelming. 
Uh, and so, you know, I don't see why um, uh, they wouldn't go for it. But, uh, but we are talking to them and uh, we'll see how it goes. And finally, Genevieve, what would you say to the NDP leadership about the relationship of the party's core values to the issue of Palestinian rights? And what I mean specifically is, in your opinion, would the leadership be respecting the core values of the NDP if it opposed any form of economic sanction on Israel? Well, essentially, we, we see this resolution as a continuation of the work that the NDP has been doing on that spectrum of human rights, right? So we, we pride ourselves as being this party of standing with oppressed peoples and marginalized communities everywhere. So in my opinion, and the opinion of people who are fighting for this resolution, that if the NDP is the party of love and courage, which is our now famed slogan, that that love and courage must extend to Palestinians and that this resolution and the support of this resolution is in, in line with that mentality and in line with the work that the NDP has historically done in supporting communities across the country, but across the world as well in, in standing up for human rights and peace and for justice. Well, we've been speaking to two Palestinian rights activists in the New Democratic Party, Genevieve Neva and Yazin Kader, uh, about a new resolution calling for a ban on settlement products. And this is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for The Real News.